Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how hydrocarbons can be used as fuels. You should then be able to write balanced equations for the complete combustion of hydrocarbons. In the last video we looked at how the properties of hydrocarbons depend on the size of the molecule. We saw that short chain hydrocarbons are highly flammable and they have low boiling points. As the hydrocarbon molecules get larger, they become less flammable and the boiling point increases. Also, longer chain hydrocarbons have a higher viscosity. In other words, they tend to flow more slowly. Now, in this video, we're looking at how hydrocarbons can be used as fuels, and I'm showing you some examples here. Ships, planes, and cars all run on hydrocarbon fuels, and there are lots of other cases where hydrocarbons are used as fuels. Here's the first key fact that you need to learn. Hydrocarbon fuels release energy when they're combusted, and remember that combusted just means burned. During combustion, the carbon and hydrogen atoms in the fuel react with oxygen. In other words, the carbon and hydrogen are oxidised. Now, if the oxygen is unlimited, then this reaction produces carbon dioxide and water, and scientists call this complete combustion. So, in this video, we're going to look at how to write chemical equations for complete combustion. I'm showing you here the equation for the complete combustion of methane. As you can see, this equation is not balanced. So how do we balance it? Well, we start by balancing the carbon atoms. We've got one carbon atom in the methane. We also have one carbon atom in the carbon dioxide. This means that the carbon atoms are balanced. Now we need to balance the hydrogen atoms. We've got four hydrogen atoms in the methane, but there were only two hydrogen atoms in the water. So the hydrogen atoms are not balanced. We need to get four hydrogen atoms on the right hand side. And to do that, we put a large two in front of the water like this. Now we have four hydrogen atoms and the hydrogen's balanced. Finally, we need to balance the oxygen atoms. On the right hand side, we've got two atoms of oxygen in the carbon dioxide. We've also got two atoms of oxygen in the water. So that means that we've got four atoms of oxygen in total on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we've got two atoms of oxygen. So as you can see, the oxygen atoms are not balanced. We need to get four oxygen atoms on the left hand side. And to do that, we place a large two in front of the O2 like this. And now the equation is fully balanced. Here's a combustion equation for you to try. Pause the video now and balance this equation. OK, so we start by balancing the carbon atoms. On the left hand side, we've got three carbon atoms, and on the right hand side, we've got one carbon atom. So we need to get three carbon atoms on the right hand side, and to do that, we place a large three in front of the CO2 like this. We now have three carbon atoms on the right hand side, so the carbon atoms are balanced. Next, we need to balance the hydrogen atoms. On the left hand side, we've got eight atoms of hydrogen, but on the right hand side, we've only got two atoms of hydrogen. So we need to get eight hydrogen atoms on the right hand side, and to do that, we place a large number four in front of the water like this. Now we have eight hydrogen atoms on the right hand side, and the hydrogens are balanced. Finally, we need to balance the oxygen atoms. On the right hand side, we have six oxygen atoms in the carbon dioxide and we have four oxygen atoms in the water. This gives us a total of 10 oxygen atoms. On the left hand side, we've got two oxygen atoms. So the oxygen atoms are not balanced. We need to get 10 oxygen atoms on the left hand side. To do that, we need to place a large five in front of the oxygen like this. And now the equation's balanced. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on combustion in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.